Hello all, and welcome back to the Angmar Project, as today, we make some more dead boys. Having done Spectres last time, the next item on the list is one I've been excited about for a while, the Barrow Whites. As they haven't appeared in any film adaptation of Lord of the Rings so far, you once again have full creative reign on how to make these guys look. However, I've always adored John Howe's illustration of the Whites, as the dark, indistinct shapes contrast so nicely against the skeletal hands and features, so we'll be basing our conversions off of these. And as for the base figures, well, that was a no-brainer too, as the Night Haunt Chain Rasp from Games Workshop's Age of Sigmar line are just too perfect not to use. I've been thinking of these as Barrel Whites since they were first announced, and because they already look so good, I'm pretty much going to be using them stock but want to add a little bit to try and tie them into my army and make them look a little bit different. So I did up a test model by adding some flocking texture to the back and I really like it. I did think the gray stones were a little much for a middle earth model and so cut those off and then switched the rest of the model's weapons to swords to match up with the MESBG profiles. For the back textures I first ran some super glue down the spines and kind of spread it out onto their shoulders. Then from there I took some static grass and added it on with some tweezers. I felt this was a bit heavy on the test model, so for the rest I really tried to keep it mostly down the center, and then sprinkled some fine sand on either side to tie it into the rest of the model. Then I took an old brush I had lying around and started cutting out clumps of bristles, dipping them in super glue, and then attaching them in small sections to add variety to the grass that was already there. Then for the bases, I also wanted to try something a little different, so I added the same sand as normal to most of it, but left some big sections on the edges as I wanted to do a bit of a frozen lake look. To really sell that effect, I added some agrel and earth to create a transition between the blank base and the texture. I've never used this stuff before and was surprised just how heavily you had to put it on to really get it to crack nicely. And while I think it would be okay to put on bare plastic, I did paint some primer on before I applied it, just in case. And once it was dried, I primed the models in blue and moved straight on to painting, as I once again didn't find the Xenothal added enough to bother with. I painted the texture on top with Black Templar, thinned down with some contrast medium to make it run into all the cracks and recesses better. Then I painted the rest of the top section of cloth Abaddon Black, the bone and skin with Rakhar Flesh, and the rocky parts of the base with Macrag Blue. Then I did some wet blending, first on the icy water bits, from a matte white to a mix of Macrag Blue and White. Then I did this on the lower cloth as well, going from a mechanic standard grey to white, before washing the top half of the model in Agrax Earthshade and the bottom half in Draconoth Nightshade. Once that was dried, I dry brushed the texture on top with mechanic standard grey and Dawnstone, and the base was Andry Dust. Then I picked out the rocks on the base with more Dawnstone before doing another dry brush of Screaming Skull, followed by a final dry brush of white focusing heavily on the icy sections. Once that messy stuff was out of the way, it was on to highlights, and I did both the black cloth and skin slash bones in the same way, by simply mixing more and more white into the base color, focusing the highest highlights to the most important parts, like around the eyes. For the eyes, I applied straight white into them before picking on the edges with Flash Gets Yellow, leaving a dark line between this and the rest of the face. Last but not least, I did the lower section of the cloth by creating a gradient from Mechanica Standard Grey to white on my wet palette, and using this to layer up over the washed wet blend to get a kind of faded look. For the test model, I applied a blue glow using Talisar Blue like I did on the Death Knight Paladin from Westphalia, but I ended up finding it a bit too high fantasy and dramatic for the darker look I was going for, and so I decided to leave it off. And after adding a few tufts and removing the bases, I had a good handful of barrel whites for my army. But I decided I didn't want to stop there. But before getting into that, I wanted to thank my newest Patreon founders, Adam and Arnold. We've got a real little community going, and I shared a lot of behind the scenes for this process with them, and even discussed some stuff like the blue glow. Getting this kind of support really is amazing and a huge motivator to get stuff done, so if you're interested in checking that out, hop over onto Patreon via the link in the description. But now, back to the project. 
Charles Lin of the Heroic Highlights Instagram page, which is amazing and you should check it out immediately if you haven't already, announced a diorama contest for this month. And I decided this was just too perfect an opportunity to pass up. And so I set out to recreate that original artwork I was inspired by. So first of all, I needed the models. So I grabbed a spare plastic photo from my bits box. To match and better the artwork, I cut off the sword hand and replaced it with an empty hand from a Perry miniature set, then turned the head to look more to his left. For the barrel white, I picked out one of the sculpts that I felt best matched up with the artwork and went from there. I replaced the right arm with an archer's arm from the Ghostmark Goblin Sprue and then cut off his left hand too, as this would need to be gripping onto Frodo. To do this, I grabbed an arm from the Warlord Games Orc set, as they all had these open, grabby hands, and clipped off the fingers so it nicely fit over Frodo's arm. Then I cut it at the wrist and attached it to the barrel white by pinning both models together. I put a pin into Frodo's foot and then clipped off the bottom structural bits from the white so he looked like he was floating, before painting him up like the others I already did and giving Frodo a quick and dirty paint job too. For the actual dio, I started by cutting out a perfect cube of wood from a 4x4 piece of lumber. Then I built up a hill out of insulation foam and attached some rough spires of rock by pinning them into the rest of the foam using toothpicks. Then I applied some drywall compound to the back of the pieces to get a more perfect edge. And since I already had it out, applied this to the hill to give it a more natural shape. To get some more texture, I created a path to the barrel by ripping up an old egg carton and just sticking that into the wet compound before then adding some texture over top by just pouring basin grit onto it. And once that was dried, I applied some watered down PVA over the whole thing. After all that, I sanded down the back and sides and painted them up all black using a cheap craft paint before re-sanding and repainting a couple more times to give it a smoother look. For the actual dio, I painted the ground in a dark brown and dry brushed it in lighter browns and painted the stones in a dark bluish gray, then dry brushed it in lighter and lighter grays. Next, I just had to add some greenery by applying a mix of fine turf, static grass, and moss before then applying some more tufts and bushes over top. With all that done, I decided to take this a step further and made a backdrop by using some old wood I had lying around, which I then gave an initial coat of white to get a better looking surface before painting on a night sky. I kept this pretty loose and abstract, trying to match the style of the original work, with lots of shades of bluey grey mixing about and a bright yellowy white moon. After that was done, I repainted the edges in black, drilled a hole and glued on Frodo and the barrel white, and varnished the whole thing. Matte for the dial and gloss for the border. And so we're all done! I think these guys are going to be great running along with my Angmar army. They're just different enough to stand out, but definitely tie into the rest of the force. Now as for the little Dio, I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like the greenery could have been a bit cleaner and I could have definitely spent more time on Frodo's paint job, but overall, I think it got close enough to the inspiration that I'm pretty satisfied. Also, I like that it's small, as I'm quickly running out of room for stuff. So have you ever made a diorama or wanted to make one? And how do you think the non-Middle-Earth Warhammer stuff fits into the Tolkien setting? For more pictures of all this, jump over on Twitter or Instagram. And as always, I'm Anders, and have a good one.